So we've lived off grid for nearly seven years, sailing around the world in our boat, and we've just recently rebuilt an off grid RV and traveled across America in it. Along the way, I've installed more solar panels, lithium batteries, inverters, chargers than I care to admit. <laughs> but today, I'm testing out these brand new Renogy 200 watt N type solar panels. These guys are smaller, they're more efficient, and have this really cool 16 lane tech inside that I'll go through in a minute that helps with shading and keeps them cooler for longer. So I figured, let's see how these actually stack up against our normal 200 watt solar panels on the roof. And just for fun, I picked up a new 200 watt flexible panel as well, because they get a lot of heat online. So I wanna see how that stacks up against these rigid panels. So let's get to it and see how these compare. Now stick around until the end, because the results were so interesting that we needed to go out and test Renogy's brand new shadow flex solar panels as well, to see if their anti-shading technology actually works. Already, these are noticeably smaller than the 200 watt flexible solar panel we have. So let's get these on the roof and see how they compare with the rigid ones in size. So the 200 watt end type panels are definitely smaller than both the standard rigid and flexible panels. The difference is in the cell design. They use 16 bus bars, which is basically like a 16 lane highway. These other panels have five or nine lanes for the electrical current to flow through. So if one lane is blocked by shade or dirt, the current will flow through the remaining lanes, like cars on a highway. So having 16 lanes means less heat, less drop off and better performance and efficiency. Now it's a bit of an overcast day, but that's not gonna stop us. We're gonna see how these panels perform as a pair when shaded. So using a 60 amp MPPT charge controller with no shade, we're still pulling around 270 watts, which is actually not bad right now being overcast. Now let's see how these panels handle some shading. First, I'm laying a towel straight across the center of both panels. And just like that, the output drops to about 10 watts, giving us less than one amp of charge. Next, I shift the towel down to the bottom corner, covering the entire bottom of one panel and about half of the second. That brings us down even further, around six watts. Now here's where it gets interesting. I fold the towel in half, creating a thin strip of shade right along the bottom edge of both panels. And as you can see, the output drops to zero watts. That's because we basically blocked the electrical lanes at the bottom of the panel, which completely breaks the current path. And these panel designs don't handle that too well. Finally, for the last test, the sun's just popped his head out for a bit, which is great for us as I'm laying the towel across one full panel. So we're running off a single 200 watt panel now and we're getting about 160 watts, which is exactly what we'd expect for one panel right now. Now let's swap in the N-type 200 watt panels and see how they compare. With no shade, we're pulling in 298 watts, which is pretty close to the earlier test. Throwing a towel across the center drops us to nine watts, which is nearly identical to the standard panels. Blocking the bottom corner gives us around 10 watts. Again, similar, but we did notice the standard panels dipped even more in this same test, right down to about six watts. Now here's the real difference. With a strip of shade along the bottom edge of both panels, the end types still give us 47 watts. That's thanks to the 16 bus bar design, as I mentioned earlier. More lanes mean more current flow and more efficiency. And finally, Shading one full panel gives us 123 watts, which is right on target for one panel in these overcast conditions. Now I ran the same test on a 200 watt Renogy flexible solar panel, just for fun. But to be fair, this actually performed pretty well. The sun popped out again and we just hit 173 watts, which was the highest output of the day. And not surprising considering I've had four of these panels in my boat for the last five years now and they're still going strong. But just like the standard rigid panels, the moment we added any shade, the output dropped off a cliff. So yeah, once again, it just confirms the clear advantage of the more advanced N-type solar panels. So the results are pretty interesting there because because these have a 16 bus bar design, which are those 16 highways I was talking about, then when I lay the towel across them, it didn't cover every single bus bar. So essentially that with the, the standard panels have nine bus bars that run through every single cell and they're a bit longer, a tiny bit narrower. So when I laid the towel across these N-type panels, it didn't quite cover the couple 
little bus paths on the end, which is why they still produced quite a bit more power and the other ones just completely shut off because technically these should shut off too if you run something straight across them. So it got me thinking that um, shading is not really the big test between the N-type panels and the normal 200 watt panels. It's just these are more efficient. The real test of shading <laughs> is with these Renergy Shadow Flux 200 watt panels that I've got here. Now they're the same size as the N-type panels. They've got 16 bus bars as well. But these ones behave differently with shading. It doesn't actually cut off the, the row of cells when we lay a towel across them. So let's see if that's true. I'm going to test these out too. So keep in mind, it's a different day and uh, we might produce more power than before. So we're going to work on the percentage drop. We're just working out to see how much they drop in power, not the overall power they're going to make because they will differ. All right, let's get these on the roof. full sun our shadow flux panels are pulling in 320 watts a little bit more than the other two panels but that's because we have really clear skies today and the sun's out in full swing now watch as we place the towel across the center it drops down to 51 watts which is a big difference compared to the 9 to 10 watts we got from the other panels so the results here show us that these shadow flux panels are working and doing exactly what they're designed to do just like our other panels i now move the towel to completely shade the bottom corner and now we get 102 watts from our shadow flux panels compared to the 6 to 10 watts from the others again. Now across the bottom it goes right up to 187 watts which I didn't expect to see so much power but this is what they're designed to do. And lastly covering one panel completely gives us 168 watts slightly more than the other two but that's only because the sky is clear today so basically having one panel fully shaded is pretty much going to give us the same results across the board here. Uh, it's safe to say these shadow flux panels definitely work. Um, definitely, definitely produce power when shaded still. That's that's amazing. That's that's really cool. I thought the end type panels did well. I want to remove these panels now and get all shadow flux panels. <laughs> Although I shouldn't say that because we've got a thousand watts of solar. We've got 600 amp hours of battery and uh, our batteries very rarely drop under 80% on this fifth wheel. So. We're doing quite well, so I won't be replacing these panels. These are working really well with the nine bus bars, uh, five 200 watt panels. If anything, I need another battery on, on this fifth wheel. <laughs> now I just got to work out how to disconnect these because normally I lay a towel across them to disconnect them to cut the power. But as we just saw, that doesn't work. <laughs> All right, so we've just jumped back on the boat now. I've got my 200 watt flexible panel here that we bought for the boat that we tested in this video. Now, obviously it didn't outperform our shadow flux panels, but we needed a flexible panel for the Bimney. In conclusion, we've uh, tested our standard Renergy 200 watt panel. Uh, it's a great panel at a budget price. So you know it's a good panel because a good quality panel is gonna have nine bus bars in each cell compared to a cheap panel, which will only have five. Uh, but if you wanna go up uh, to a better quality panel, you got the N-type panels, which are built with with better quality components and they've got the 16 cell bus bar design that we've been going on about in this whole video. So they don't necessarily work better when shaded, but they're just more efficient in the way that having more of those little wires across the panel is gonna capture the light when shaded. So um, they are better in that, that aspect and we saw that in the test. Now, if you really want the best panel, then obviously the, the, the test proved that the Renergy Shadow Flux panel really outperforms all the panels we tested um, in this video uh, by having those little diodes in each cell. So rather than cutting off the whole lane of cells in that solar panel when shaded, it only cuts, cuts off every individual cell. I was stoked to see that they live up to uh, their expectations. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As you can see, we're back on the boat. We're heading to the Bahamas. And uh, yeah, please subscribe, you're gonna see our adventures. I'm gonna make more of these uh, solar panel videos in the future, because you know, if you guys have been following us, you know that I love off-grid living and solar panels and batteries. So I'm super stoked to be having, living this lifestyle. So guys, subscribe, hope you enjoyed the video. See you every Sunday.